Welcome into Seahawks Today, powered by Chat Sports. Tyler Jones here with you. Today's show is presented by Aura, the all in one digital safety company. Start your free 14 day trial now at aura.com slash chat sports. We'll tell you more about what they do coming up later in the show. Today, we are talking about roster bubble candidates, and we're going to do a numbers game of sorts. We will play the percentages. I will give you a percentage chance of 10 different players on the current Seahawks roster of their chances to make the final roster for the Seahawks, the 55-man roster. Yes, that's correct, 55-man in 2022. Let's go ahead and look at the roster bubble candidates that we will focus on today. Obviously, there's a lot of guys, but we're going to highlight these 10 in particular. Freddie Swain, Tariq Wallen, uh, Marquise Goodwin, Jake Caron, LJ Collier, Bo Melton, Gabe Jackson, Phil Haynes, Hugo Amati, as well as Darwin Thompson. Let's go ahead and start with Freddie Swain. He's competing for the number three wide receiver slot uh, spot in the slot. He was the Seahawks' 2020 sixth-round pick, and last year did not show a whole lot. 25 catches, 343 yards, and four touchdowns. I would give Freddie about a 65% chance to make the roster for the Seahawks. You look at what the Seahawks have at those first two spots at receiver with DK and Lockett. Those guys are great. And then there is a significant drop-off from that point. Freddie very well might find himself as the number five receiver behind uh, D. Eskridge and Freddie Swain and, uh, and, and company there when it's all said and done. Freddie Swain obviously uh, in position, I think, to still make the team. But I don't know if he's necessarily going to be your number three receiver competing with Marquise Goodwin and, and D. Eskridge and company for that spot. So Freddie at 65%. Next on our list, we go to on the countdown Tariq Wolin of uh, a, one of the starting cornerbacks potentially for the Seahawks this year, competing for one of those outside cornerback spots. The Seahawks selected him in the fifth round of this year's draft. And a while back, we were talking about Tariq Wolin just trying to make the roster right that it looked like it was going to be difficult for him to do so as a fifth-round pick, that maybe he would be a practice squad guy. But he's been such a standout throughout OTAs that I think the chances of him making the roster are pretty high. And now it goes beyond just him making the roster, but potentially starting is not out of the question. It's a long shot, but nonetheless, he has passed the eye test for the Seahawks, it seems, so far at this point. So Tariq Wallen is number two on our list at 75%. Good chance he makes the final roster. Now I want to hear from you guys. Who's a player the Seahawks should cut? Of the guys that are on the roster right now, our pin comment today, give me a name that the Seahawks should move on from that should not be a part of the Seahawks roster when they narrow this thing down when it's all said and done. Be honest with me. Give me one name who they should cut. Let me know in the comment section. We turn our attention to Marquise Goodwin now. He's also competing for that wide receiver spot. Signed on May 23rd. Previously played for the Bills, the Niners, the Eagles, as well as the Chicago Bears. And I'd put it at about 50% chance. Now, you may be saying to yourself, well, Tyler, why would you sign a guy just to cut him later? And really, it depends on the development of D. Eskridge. If they see what they like, what they want to see out of D. Eskridge, then I don't think that there's a spot for Marquise Goodwin, essentially. If you're a Seahawk fan, you want to see uh, D. Eskridge really develop where you don't have to turn to Marquise Goodwin. So I put this at about 50-50 right now, whether he makes the roster at this point in time. Let's turn our attention now to Jake Curran. Expected to compete for the starting right tackle spot, and rookie Abraham Lucas is already beating him out, it would appear, as Lucas got first-team reps in OTAs. Karan undrafted in 2021, and it's a good story for Jake Karan to go from an undrafted player to starting in the National Football League like we saw at points last year, but I, I, I think it's going to be difficult for him to make the roster now. With already basically losing his job at this point, he's got an uphill battle. And Abraham Lucas has shown so much 
that Jake Caron is going to have to step up and show some more that he's worthy of a spot on this roster when it's all said and done. For Jake Caron, it's not just about trying to win this job. It's trying to just stay on the roster here. And he's got an uphill battle, it seems, at 45% to make the roster. Let's go ahead and move on. Our number five candidate that we will look at on our countdown is LJ Collier. Collier, a former first-round pick of the Seahawks back in 2019. Seattle declined his fifth-year option, making him a free agent after this year. So already having to play with a chip on his shoulder of sorts. And this was the guy that everyone pointed to as the easy trade candidate, the post-June 1 cut, if you will, that was very high profile. But at this point, LJ Collier is still a member of the Seattle Seahawks and has not been traded, obviously. And he surprised people with what he did at OTAs. And so I think LJ Collier's odds of being on this roster were pretty slim maybe a month ago. But with the way that he looked in OTAs and the fact that they haven't really found a trade partner for him at this point, I would say his odds are a lot better than they used to be. At 50%, LJ Collier's got to be feeling pretty good about himself, especially with the injury history that he's dealt with. We got five more names to get through, but before we do, today's show is presented by Aura, the all-in-one digital safety company. You can get near real-time alerts on suspicious credit inquiries, shop, bank, work, online, more safely and privately. And one of the things that they'll do is they'll keep your identity secure with extensive monitoring of your personal info, whether that's with your online banking or your social security number, all of that, they are going to keep tidy, and they're going to protect your loved ones too. Keep your family safe, up to five people on one account. And here's what we're going to do. Since you are a loyal listener, loyal watcher, that is, of Seahawks today, we're going to offer you a free 14-day trial now. If you go to Aura.com slash chat sports, sign up now, and believe me, you are going to be glad you did. Do it. Don't forget about it. Jump on it right now. Aura.com slash chat sports for a free 14-day trial. A few more names to get to. Let's look at Bo Melton now, the Seahawks' seventh-round pick. A lot of hype, actually, around Bo Melton for a seventh-round pick. He is actually competing for the number three wide receiver spot. Outside chance, but nonetheless. And he could be used on special teams, potentially as a return man. A lot of speed on Bo Melton. It might be the 54th or 55th spot, but he'll be there. I feel pretty good about Bo Melton's chances of making the final roster when it's all said and done. The Seahawks will find a way to use Bo Melton one way or the other. 90% chance he makes the roster for the Seahawks, I think, at this point. Four more names to get to. Let's talk about Gabe Jackson now. Join the Seahawks in 2021 after seven seasons with the Seattle Seahawks, and He had off-season knee surgery. He's been on the decline in most recent years after, uh, you know, that time he started with the Raiders and then joining the Seahawks in 2021. uh, It just hasn't been great for Gabe Jackson. And we don't know when he's coming back necessarily. And so I think there's a chance that the Seahawks move on from Gabe Jackson. And it's a real shame because – It's not any of his own doing. We know that he's a talented football player. If he were healthy, no question he would make this team. But with those injury issues, with not being quite there, I think that the chances of him getting cut are pretty high at this point. Will the Seahawks cut Gabe Jackson? Let me know. Type Y for yes, in for no. Let me know in the comment section, one way or the other, how this goes for Gabe Jackson. Type Y for yes, type in for no. And if he is cut, or any moves happen for that matter, You know we're going to be all over it here on Seahawks Today, covering the team's news, rumors, trades, free agency, and more. Turn on your notifications now so you never miss a moment of Seahawks Today here on the channel. We certainly appreciate you. Turn on those notifications. You'll be glad you did. A few more names here for you. Let's look at Phil Haynes now, a guard for the Seahawks, 2019 fourth-round selection, battled through numerous injuries the last two seasons. But... I will say this much, that he did impress in the two starts that he had for the Seahawks at the end of 2021. And I think that caught the attention 
of Seahawks coaches, of Pete Carroll and company, and that's why he'll earn a starting spot. With the questions surrounding Gabe Jackson, it plays to Phil Haynes uh, in this case. Uh, He's the beneficiary of sorts at that 75% odds. If Gabe Jackson weren't dealing with those injuries, the odds for Phil Haynes to make the roster would be much lower at this point in time. But nonetheless, he's in good shape right now. Another name is Hugo Amati, the former star at the University of Oregon. And he's competing for that nickel cornerback spot, 2019 fourth-round pick, but struggled in pass coverage with uh, a lot of penalties in 2021 as well. And just to give some numbers on that, 56 of 67 pass attempts last year towards Amati's direction were given up for 577 yards and a touchdown and a 101.3 passer rating. Quarterbacks loved throwing at Hugo for all the wrong reasons last year. Six penalties total is what he was able to draw last year. Not great for Hugo. He is going to have to take a big step up in OTAs and improve a lot from the player that we saw in 2021. Our last name to get to, I got that number at 40%. Final one, Darwin Thompson, the former Kansas City Chiefs running back. Spent last year on the practice squads for the Bucks and the Chiefs in uh, 2021. A bit undersized at 5'8". And I know that the Seahawks are likely to move on from Chris Carson, but there are better options than Darwin Thompson. I like Darwin. He and I are both from Tulsa. He's got a great story and everything. But undersized, has dealt with a lot of fumbling issues as well. I I don't see him making the Seahawks roster when it's all said and done. So there you have it. There's our numbers to recap. Freddie Swain, 65% chance to make the roster. Tariq Wallen, 75. Marquise Goodwin, 50%. Jake Caron, 45%. LJ Collier at 50%. Bo Melton at 90%, Gabe Jackson at 25%, Phil Haynes at 75%, Hugo Amati at 40%, and Darwin Thompson with a 5% chance to make the roster. How about you? Survey time. Who is the most likely Seahawks player to get cut? We showed you the numbers of where we think things stack up right now. What say you? Put a number on it. Give me a name most likely to get cut from the Seahawks roster, I want to know. Tell me in the comments section below.